So today I'm going to show you how to uh, train some shoulders, train some uh, triceps and stuff, and then uh, now to get a nice round of ass. So, so a lot of people out there are wondering how to get a round butt. So I've had a few people ask me about that. How, how did I get my butt so big? I don't know whether that was a compliment or an insult, but uh, I'm going to show you how to get a big butt. So as one person called me, uh, Triple G, Giant Glutes Galant. I hope you enjoy it. Jim, uh, Champion Athletic Club here, and I'm doing some uh, dumbbell presses. So I'm warming up with uh, 70 pounders here, or 65s. I can't uh, see the label on the side there. It's all the same, really, when you get those weights. But uh, yeah, I'm just uh, doing some nice slow reps. And uh, as you can see, that uh, you know, it's important to warm up, right? And I'm not locking out at the top. I make sure that the arms don't come all the way up. Uh, see, this is as far as I feel my shoulders actually. Once I go above the range that um, I'm showing here, what happens is the stress starts to transfer to my neck and to the muscles there, but my delt actually doesn't feel any different. So that's why my range of motion is exactly in that that form right there. That's that's why it's it stays in the, those areas. So, so here I am moving up to uh, I believe 90s. Is that what this is? Yeah, 90 90 pounders. So 90 pounders are really not hard for me. Uh, the truth is when I started doing uh, a lot of dumbbell shoulder presses, especially a while ago when I was working with heavier weights, I found that the biggest difficulty was actually getting the weights up uh, to do the movement instead of actually lifting them uh, for the actual shoulder press themselves. So uh, so here, yeah, I'm doing a set of 90s and I, and I, I proceed to do a few, few sets. And again, my rep range always changes depending on the tempo of my repetition. So. You know, a set can be anywhere from 20 repetitions to, to seven repetitions, depending on what my tempo is in the movement. So I do try to slow it down. As you can see here, I'm just slowing them down and just being careful with the shoulders and the delts, but at the same time, uh, trying to give them a pretty good workout. But uh, like I said, the slower reps seem to be safer. Uh, so that that's exactly why I'm doing this here. So I could easily do a set of 20 reps with 90 pounders. I've done it with 105s actually. Uh, I haven't worked with heavy dumbbells in a while because in my home I don't have an actual seated shoulder press. So doing standing shoulder press is much harder than seated. So seated is kind of nice because you challenge the delts without actually the balance in the lower back coming into play so much. So I cut a few of my sets out there. I just, uh, you know, move this video along. But here I'm doing some lateral raises. And the lateral raises are... Uh, you know, medium range of motion. I just, but once again, I stay in the range of motion where I'm actually feeling my delts and I'm not, uh, you know, transferring the weight to other areas and starting to rotate the joint and all this kind of stuff. I really want to work the side delts as much as possible. And you'll see the benefit of working these delts, uh, you know, pretty soon because I, you know, once in a while you hit the beach and then you can show off, right? You know, make sure nobody kicks sand in your face because, you know, there's always somebody there that can kick sand in your face if your delts aren't pumped enough. So, but here I got, I just move up to uh, 30 pounders after doing a warm up. And again, I, I try not to, you know, really swing the weight too, too much. I, I try to keep it slow on the way down, the eccentric portion, because that's really where most of the muscle adaptation happens. Most of the breakdown is in the concentric, not the, the lifting, but uh, more the eccentric, sorry. It's the eccentric. So the, the lowering of the weight is where you get most of the benefit. Of course, in lateral raises, this is a little tricky because your strength, you know, goes down exponentially as you go up in the range of motion. So you'll find that it doesn't necessarily have the same rules applying in isolation movements as the compound ones. The compound ones sometimes are a little bit easier to work with. Uh, your strength curve seems to be a little bit more consistent all the way up and all the way down. But yeah, th this is a, this is really kind of a standard sort of shoulder workout for me. I'll do dumbbell presses and, and lateral raises, uh, although I'm doing a I'm doing a variation which I'm going to show in a, in a video in the future of a lot of races where I, I do them on an incline which is extremely effective. I saw uh, Milo Sarsev uh, train somebody doing or performing that technique and man it, it just burns the crap out of them. So yeah I'll, I'll show you that in a, in a video uh, coming up. But yeah I just do uh, about three to four sets of shoulder press and then two or three sets of delts and I think more than anything I'm probably stalling because I know I have to do some legs. It sure would be a lot nicer to be at the beach right now. Well, this is pretty nice. Oh, wow, the water is pretty nice on my feet. A little cold though. Don't think I'm going to be jumping in. Hey mister, can I splash you? 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I think he learned his lesson. That's what he gets for picking on somebody smaller than him. Anyway, here I am uh, doing some uh, close grip bench presses. Uh, small range of motion once again, just because I can't lock the elbows out all the way anyway, uh, based on where my elbows are and stuff. Um, you can't see from this angle, but my arms are always staying slightly bent and locking the arms out It doesn't do any good anyway because you're just taking the stress off the muscle and putting stress on the joint So I say this over and over again. And I will keep repeating myself because one day uh, Somebody will listen to me. I'm hoping I'm praying that somebody will actually think that what I have to say is important <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I move up to 185 pounds I'm not doing excessive weight or anything, but just uh, pumping blood into the triceps, you know, two, two to three sets. Uh, sometimes I'll go to four or five, you know, but, but usually my, my shoulder and tricep workouts, you know, I usually stay within three sets to, to, to six sets, you know, per body part, somewhere around there. And, uh, and then, cause I'm going to do three body parts today. You know, I'm going to do the, the shoulders, the triceps, and then the legs, of course, to, uh, show you how to build an ass. So uh, so here you go. Yeah, you can see I don't touch my chest because that's not necessary once again Once I touch my chest that means that the elbows now are bending and the wrists are getting torqued in a certain way and uh, You know if I go wider my grip then it'll be easier to touch the chest But then I find that then my shoulders start to come into the movement and it's it's not my triceps once again So you have to go on feel for this you'll have to go on feel and uh, you know the, the the problem is with the internet now there are a thousand people out there squatting, deadlifting, and doing all this uh, different type of CrossFit sort of thing. And they're trying to mimic what they see on the internet, but they're not necessarily listening to their bodies in the process, and it's causing quite a few injuries, to tell you the truth. Uh, I tried to deadlift for years, and uh, one of the worst injuries I had to my lower back was from doing deadlifts from the floor. And I just finally gave up on that whole thing because it just seemed like just not the right movement for me. Uh, so here's a different uh, skull crusher movement and I find uh, going with uh, the right arm here, I'm, I'm just doing one arm dumbbell, one arm dumbbell uh, skull crushers there. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I find that when I do two arms together, one arm usually gives up earlier and sometimes it's twice the pain too because there's two arms now where there's pain instead of one. <laughs> so I find that usually one arm will give out before the other one. So. Um, also, the thing is, when you do one arm at a time, you'll notice that your position on the bench is slightly different. So you actually end up turning slightly and hitting a different part of the tricep. So something might look similar. You could do a movement and it might look similar, but it's actually hitting different parts of the muscle. So you want variation. You want to make sure you're hitting all the, all the muscle parts, right? And it's important in the skull crusher to use a weight that you can get a good burn in. I mean, here and there, I will challenge myself and I will move up and wait, but there there are those sets that you might have uh, encountered where it's almost like your arm just dies you don't necessarily get a burn no pump it's like you you push but it seems like nothing's happening and I find that uh, the burn sets I seem to get more results from than I do from the, the absolute strain where there's just a giving up like it's almost like your nervous system just shuts off to the muscle so here I am going a little bit heavier uh, I believe this is 30 pounders and uh, what I'm doing is you know, just once again, just contracting the muscle. Now you notice that my elbow is more towards my forehead than straight up in the air. Now the reason why this is, is that this stretches the long head of the tricep and keeps the stress on the muscle itself and not on the elbow joint. If I was to move my elbow towards my waist, the torque on the elbow would be much worse and I would start to work the muscle that is closer to the elbow, which is sometimes necessary, but I would use lighter weight to do that. And I encountered this long time ago. I learned this because I was at first doing skull crushers, literally like they were taught, you know, bring the, bring the bar right to your forehead, you know, and, and push up. And I was doing that. And what I ended up with is a, a bursitis on my left elbow for about three years. So I finally changed the exercise because I'm a pretty fast learner. It only took me three years and, uh, and I've gotten results in the triceps ever since. So here we are into the, the climax of the video. This is the one-legged squat, which I've showed you before. Uh, there are many variations of the one-legged squat, but this is definitely an ass, hamstring, and quadricep builder. This is this is the king. This is the key. Um, if you perform this exercise on a Smith machine, you will get more ass development because you can actually squeeze at the top. Or a walking lunge, you could get uh, you get more range of motion on the bum, so you get that squeeze as you come up, and then you change legs back and forth. 
the, the only reason why I don't do a lot of walking lunges is because I do find they are a little bit more risky for injury because you're taking stress off the muscle then putting stress on the muscle. Taking stress off the muscle then putting stress on the muscle as you're changing legs. You know, you're going left, right, left, right. And this sometimes causes muscle pulls and things because your your body's using a bit of momentum, you know, with the dumbbells. The other thing I find with walking lunges is that uh, especially with the dumbbell kind is that your grip seems to give out quite a bit instead of your legs uh, or sometimes you know just holding on uh, and, you know creates quite a cardiovascular sort of situation so I find I get out of breath as well so I will add those to my movements ideally I would be doing them with a barbell but because of my dislocating shoulder injury from years ago I can't lift the bar over my head and then behind my neck and expect it not to cause my shoulder a little bit of problems so uh, I have to use dumbbells in this gym because we don't have a squat rack placed accordingly where I could, uh, you know, do the walking lunge uh, right out of the rack. So, but yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm just using one plate aside. I'm not using any heavier weight, although I can go to heavier weights and I will in the future. I have done 185 and uh, 225 and things. And don't forget after doing lunges, you gotta you know, shake it out. Shake it out, man. Shake it. Just kidding. You, you don't have to actually shake it out. That really looks bad, actually. To, yeah, don't don't worry about that. Just don't include that in your workout. Uh, so, yeah, I perform about three to five sets of these lunges, depending on how I feel that day. Uh, sometimes I'll go heavier, sometimes I'll go lighter. And if I go lighter, sometimes the range of motion will be a little bit deeper. Uh, again, it always, always boils down to how I feel. But thanks a lot for listening. And uh, I'll have another video up for you guys pretty soon so thanks for tuning in take care for now yes.